Hey guys, have you heard of this lady named Cynthia Kaufman? She was this serial killer. Um, and let's get into her because um, her story intrigued me and I can't keep it that long. So let's jump right into it. She was born on January 19th, 1962 in California somewhere. I'm not really sure her exact um, town, whatever, it doesn't matter. She was born into this really devout Catholic family I grew up Catholic and I can't even say that word, um, but I'm nothing like her. Anyways, um, and she became pregnant um, when she was a teenager. She was only 17, so luckily she wasn't like 13 or 14, but still 17 is really young. And um, this was like in the 1970s at this point. No, 1980s at this point, right? No, 70s. And so, of course, like that's super frowned upon to be pregnant before you're married because she wasn't married. And um, she also, abortion was out of the question. Now, I don't know if she wanted to have an abortion, um, but she was not allowed. And um, also, um, I guess she didn't know what else to do. So she had the baby, but um, also she was forced to marry the person that she had, you know, got pregnant with. After five years, she like, freaking ran away so she she was in california but she fled to this town called page arizona and she actually um got a job um pretty quickly and it sounds like a, a good start to you know her fleeing but of course she's young she has no money i mean she works at a diner but you know it didn't make her rich off the bat so she meets this guy and she moves in right away with him and um he is also not the best i'm not but they were driving in the car and um they were in a stoplight they get stopped <laughs> and they get caught with possession of methamphetamine and a loaded gun so the guy ends up going to jail she gets let go she doesn't have to serve any time he only serves six weeks so it's not too bad but still he serves some time while he's in jail he gets his cellmate <laughs> The cellmate, he has a cellmate by the name of, J of James Marlowe. Now, when Cynthia Kaufman somehow runs, meets this James Marlowe guy, it was like apparently a love at first sight. Meeting someone in jail, just, oh my gosh, even though she was like this devout, even though she was raised in this devout Roman Catholic family, <laughs> she had a thing for bad boys, I guess. Maybe it was something different. They had a history of committing crimes and this include armed robberies and home invasions so i know a crime is a crime but i feel like different crime crimes have different weights and that's a pretty big deal home invasion armed robbery once there he once he was out of prison and they got together um and sorry about that boyfriend that she had but he she was like bye um he, they went to stay with his family his relatives and they were living rent free okay this this pisses me off because they were living rent free and they were still like stealing anything that was worth anything um and because they were already living rent free and then they're being destructive you know and messy they were asked to leave you know so this family sounds semi-decent if like they were like fuck the, you know fuck this because then um they go to other family members and they also are turned away because they're like no like you steal and like you don't pay rent so it's like no like we're not taking you in so <laughs> they just get so stupid so they end up living in the woods which is fine if like you live in the woods it's not really like that it's just that like they literally had like this home and they're not like they're not like survivor kind of nature people they don't know how to live in the woods so they just live in the woods because nobody wants them because they steal and stuff so whatever so while they're living in the woods they get linked to this like burglary that involved cash jewelry and like this shotgun from a house it was a home invasion i don't know if like they put anybody in danger or if anybody was home at the time or if they anybody was harmed but from what i read nobody was like actually killed and i don't think anybody was harmed either because they didn't go to jail or nothing was came up of that from what i could tell but anyways so as as you can kind of see like their crimes are getting more intense right because at first it was like they were just stealing whatever they could for some money and not now they were like 
they're going higher to home invasions, which Marlowe or James Marlowe had already been doing. But for this, for Cynthia Coffin, this was to her was an escalation because she had never been part of any of that. Basically, they're still in this steal, like they're still in this burglary stealing mode because they need money, right? So they don't want to work, I guess. So there's this girl named Sandra Neary. Um, she's this adult woman, 32 years old. And she had left her home from, um, what is it called? Costa Mesa, California. Oh, Costa Mesa. And um, basically she had never returned. She was going to run errands and she um, was gonna go get some money from the ATM, the cash machine and she just never returned. The police, um, they had found her car um, by a park in a local parking lot. But unfortunately, like about two weeks later, her body was found by some hikers like out in the woods or something. So, you know, just unfortunate. So then in that same year, around the time she was found, this other girl is also getting cash from a cash machine and ATM. Um, she was also like withdrawing money and they had, um, she had just disappeared. Because of where they found her car, it was near a cash machine and uh, they may have um, found some records that she was, she had withdrawn cash around that time. I'm not really sure, but because of like the evidence, um, they had theorized that she was abducted while getting cash. And I didn't read that she was ever found. So, ooh, I don't know about that if, um, so if you guys know about the story and you guys know if her second, their second victim, Paula Simmons was ever found, let me know. A few weeks after this, um, this girl named Karina Simmons, she, she was also like, just running errands she was in broad daylight at a shopping mall she was also getting cash probably like one of her errands i don't think she just went out to get i don't think she just went out to get money but she was just broad daylight like we all do like in broad daylight um i don't know if this mall was just more secluded but she was like at a shopping mall broad daylight just gets abducted lionel I'll cash if i need to this is like anybody people draw cash like on a daily basis right but it's because it's cash you just have to like be careful and i always am and it's like a fear but um shit <sighs> oh and remember this name karina novice because she does come up again and this other lady's name comes uh, this other girl's name comes up again that i'm about to mention lionel l-y-n-e-l Marais. Um, she was just she was a college student, she was only 19 years old, and um also she wasn't even at the ATM because all the prior victims had been like withdrawing money at some point. She wasn't, she um it seems that she was abducted from her actual place of work, which is a dry it was a dry cleaning business, and um it was suspected that she was abducted from her from her place of work because after that she was supposed to go meet up with her boyfriend for a date and she never showed up so he or someone called in that she there was a missing person and um so when they started searching they found that her car was you know at the parking lot of the dry cleaning business unfortunately later her body was found at a motel and there was evidence that she was sexually assaulted and so they're at this lodge and when they're checking in, um, the proprietor of the lodge, he recognizes the names because the police that had found these last two victims, um, their last two victims had issued a statewide alert. So now their name was everywhere looking for them. And the proprietor of the property, um, he recognizes the names, so he calls the police. He's so smart, love this man. They do find them, they catch them. Lead, they lead them to Karina and Novice's body. And by the time that the trial came around, they were blaming each other. And James Marlowe was trying to say, that, so they had the trial together um, and they were both, um, they were both sentenced to death on August 30th, 1989. That was it. Yeah, so I'll see you guys next time for the next story. Bye.